Penile cancer is a really rare condition. Only 400 people on average in the UK are diagnosed with penile cancer each year. Treatment for penile cancer is pretty effective. The main source of the main uh, type of treatment is surgery. So that would be um, a, a partial amputation or a total amputation, or what is called a glandectomy, which is removal of the head of the penis, and that will usually uh, result in a positive outcome for the patient. Uh, survival rates for men diagnosed with penile cancer in the early stage is very good. So at least 80% of men uh, diagnosed with penile cancer in the early stages can expect to live beyond five years. The research we conducted for Health Talk Online um, was a collaborative project um, with Aberystwyth University, Oxford University and St James's Hospital um, who were all collaborating with Leeds Metropolitan University to interview men um, from across the UK who have been diagnosed and treated for penile cancer. In order to collect the data, I used this camera. I went into men's homes and asked them to describe their experiences of penile cancer, the treatment for penile cancer, the diagnosis, the impact which that diagnosis had on their lives. Um, to gain the data, I asked a very open question to start with. So the question was, from the point of where you found there may be something wrong, could you tell me your experiences of penile cancer? And that opened up their stories, their narratives. Um, from that, I was able to fill in the gaps by asking various supplementary questions, uh, questions about their experiences in regard to sexual function, in regard to urinary function, so how their treatment impacted on how they use the toilet, um, and how it impacted on their mental health and well-being. One of the most surprising findings from the study was that once people opened up about their condition and started talking about it, that they really felt relieved about that and felt that they could get support from other people. We can encourage men to open up more about penile cancer by using the Health Talk Online website because they can go to that and find you know, material information about how other people experience the condition. So it's an extremely rare condition. They're unlikely to ever meet somebody who's had it or meet somebody who's heard of somebody who's had it, but they can access this website 24 hours a day in the privacy of their own home, you know, or with friends and family. Um, and some of the chaps did talk about using the internet to find information about penile cancer. So this website will have information about other people's experiences. A lot of the men who took part in the study had a very convoluted route to being diagnosed with penile cancer. Some men um, were um, referred from their GPs to a sexual health clinic um, and some men were referred to dermatologists. Um, for many men it took many months before they actually received a diagnosis of penile cancer. As with many diseases, um, it's important to receive a, an early diagnosis. And with the early diagnosis, you're more likely to um, have more uh, effective treatment and uh, a better outcome. The good thing about the website is that it's an amazing teaching resource. So that when, when we're teaching doctors or nurses or physiotherapists or primary care nurses, when we're teaching them about penile cancer, we can show them video clips of patients' experiences, which will really bring it alive to them. This research study is really, really important. Penile study is an extremely under-researched topic and the recommendations, the guidelines on how to treat penile cancer are very, very sparse. Um, through studies like patients' experiences of penile cancer, we're able to build up a greater understanding of how men experience treatment, experience diagnosis of penile cancer. And by gaining that understanding, we're able to make recommendations on how to better develop um, resources, information resources for men, and the care of men who've been diagnosed with penile cancer. The future for this research is to share it as widely as possible. So we're going to launch um, the website at an event in London, and we're going to give talks to health professionals. We're going to integrate it to teaching within universities across the UK. We're going to talk at conferences and we're going to make sure we talk to the, the health professionals at the specialist centres that manage penile cancer 
Um, and there's also another cancer called urinary bladder cancer that affects much more people. It affects men and women, and it's similar in, the, in terms of affecting urinary and sexual functioning. So I think there's a lot we could learn from running the penile cancer study, from the impact it has on people's lives, to conduct the same study on urinary bladder cancer.